Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday, number 114 on the Man League. I'm John, as always, and another week, another pack of Hour of Devastation. We got Locust God last week. Let's see if we can uh, top that. We basically need to open Scorpion or Scarab God or an Invocation, but let's try. So we're going to crack this open, see what's in it, and see what we would take. Pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. Mommy Parabount is a pretty solid zombie. One and a white for a creature zombie common. It's a 2-2, but when another zombie enters the battlefield... Gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Real nice, aggressive creature. Uh, if you get a real good density of zombies in a black-white deck, this is going to beat in for a ridiculous amount of damage. Would I first pick it? Absolutely not. Would I pick it rather highly the second I might head towards that direction? You bet. Frontline Devastator is three and a red for a creature zombie minotaur warrior at common. It's a three, three with afflict two. Pay one and a red. Frontline Devastator gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Fine enough creature, I'd play it in a, a fair number of my red decks, if not all of them, I think, but certainly nowhere near a first pick. Tragic Lesson is two and a blue for an instant. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you return a land you control to your owner's hand. Uh, we talked about this last week. I think it's fine. I think if you're playing a little bit controlly, if you're, uh, you know, kind of going to be screwing around a little bit with uh, drawing cards and such, then this is a good card. Probably goes in blue-red spells pretty well, blue-black control, things like that. Uh, if you're being aggressive, you go nowhere near it, and it's certainly not a first pick. And now we'll see something that uh, some people have commented on, and this is totally normal. It happens in every single small set. We're going to see the same card that we saw last week immediately following Tragic Lesson, and that is Rampaging Hippo. Uh, this happens, the, the print runs are smaller for the small sets, and so you will frequently see, uh, you know, two or three cards in the same order, pack to pack to pack to pack to pack. That's why people shuffle their packs often before they pass the packs when they're drafting. Anyways, Rampaging Hippo is four green green for a creature hippo common. It's a five six trample cycling two. I like it a decent amount. It's a, a very great curve topper for the green deck. It's not ridiculously expensive, but it's still pretty darn powerful and, you know, just tramples over a ton of stuff. Nowhere near a first pick, though. So, I mean, currently our first pick, probably, but let's hope it gets better. Moaning Wall doesn't get there, though. Two and black for a creature zombie wall at common. It's no five, defender, cycling for two. This is fine if you really desperately need a way to make it to the late game, but like I talked about last week, a, a single wall, even two walls for that matter, is not going to stop an aggressive opponent. It'll stop one of their creatures, but the other two or three or four are just going to continue to get through. If your blocker doesn't somehow kill those creatures as well, your opponent has no problem just turning their board sideways. So I, I'm not sold on this idea that, oh, it's an 0-5. It, it stops the aggressive decks. No, it stops one creature in the aggressive deck. Um, yeah, not a big fan of Moaning Wall. Uh, if I am super desperate, you know, I desperately need to make the late game, you know, maybe this buys me the turn that I need. But I don't expect this to just be, haha, I've played this. Now I can play until turn 13 easily. Ain't going to happen. Next up is Ambuscade, certainly a first pick card. Two and a green for an instant common. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature an opponent controls. Very solid removal. Yes, you need a creature. Yes, it can get blown out by bounce. No, I don't really care. I, I frequently see people, you know, try to get a little bit too cute with figuring out why a card is bad. And so people will often say, well, Ambuscade's not good if they just bounce your creature. Sure. That counts for so many different spells. It counts for a large number of, you know, bomby creatures with a, a big ETB effect. Uh, you know, say it copies a creature on the battlefield and I bounce that creature or whatever. There's so many cards that you can, you know, find a corner case when you're playing against one out of, you know, five different possible colors for a card to be bad. There's no way you don't first pick this in many, many, many packs. Yeah, unconditional removal. I'm taking it over that bomb card i'm taking it over that but ambuscade is still a hundred percent first pickable next up is traveler's amulet single generic mana for an artifact at common pay a generic mana and sack it to go and get a basic land out of your car out of your uh, library reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle your library this is totally fine if you're splashing i will sometimes even play this if i'm uh, you know just a two-color deck if i need another card it thins your deck ever so slightly but do not think that thinning your card by one card makes any real difference. It's a fraction of a percent and not really worth playing a mediocre card for that reason. Uh, but if I have a spot for it, I'll go with it. It smooths your mana. It works kind of like an Evolving Wild so that you kind of have to pay for a little bit. But yeah, I, I don't mind Traveler's Amulet, um, but it's nowhere near a first pick. 
Striped Riverwinder is up next. It's six and a blue for a creature Serpent at Common. It's a 5-5 Hexproof that you can cycle for a single blue. This is expensive, and being a 5-5 is okay, but I do feel like it's really easy to double block this. You know, a pair of Oketra's Avengers kills this, and that's four mana killing seven mana, and that's a lot to ask for. If you're in the cycling deck, uh, which I don't think exists that much in this format anymore, then this is a good play. If you're, you know, somehow needing a, 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 a game ender and you didn't quite get there with a good flyer, this could work. Uh, but I'm not picking it up highly. I'm picking it up rather late. Desert of the Indomitable is up next. It's the uh, green common desert, so that means it enters tapped. You can tap it to add a green to your mana pool, or you can pay one and a green to cycle it. These are fine. Uh, I don't like playing them. If, I, if I'm aggressive, a tap land is a real cost in your deck. And uh, I, I don't mean on turn six it sucks to play a tap land, because yes, of course you can pay two and cycle it. What sucks is playing this on turn one or two or three or four for that matter, when uh, it suddenly puts you a turn behind in an aggressive format. So I'm not sold on playing these just because you got one. If you need deserts, they're fine. If you don't, I don't think you play them. So uh, Desert of the Indomitable, nowhere near a first pick. Ruin Rat is our final common. That puts us at 10 commons. No foil. Womp womp. Ruin Rat's great. One in a black for a creature. Rat at common. 1-1 one, one death touch. Uh, when it dies, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. This kills gods, which is fantastic. The Locust God, block. Well, it flies. The Scarab God, block. They both die. Exile the Scarab God. Uh, real good. Cheap little death touchers are always great. They're never a first pick, but they're, you know, very solid bid pack picks, and you'll always play them. Our first uncommon is Sinuous Stalker. Sinuous Stalker is two and a blue for a creature Naga Warrior at uncommon. It's a 2-2. Pay a blue, Sinuous Stalker gets plus one, minus one until end of turn. Eternalize, pay three blue, blue, and discard a card. Saw it that time, too. Uh, to bring it back is a 4-4. Four, four. This is fine. It's nice and aggressive. It's a 2-2 two, two for three that can become a 3-1. It's a little bit overcosted when we have three ones for two kicking around. But the Eternalized side is uh, pretty darn nice, I would say. I think I'd consider first picking it. I don't think it wins out over Ambuscade, but we can keep it in frame. Farm to Market is up next. It's two and a white for an instant uh, on the top side. Destroy target attacking or blocking creature. Solid removal spell. Market is two and a blue to uh, draw two cards and then discard two cards. That's a, a little bit less good, but I would play this for the farm side, and I would even consider first picking it for the farm side. Uh, again, I don't think it beats Ambuscade. They're both narrow removal because farm is only going to be in uh, combat, whereas Ambuscade can be whenever, but I think I'd consider it. Tenacious Hunter is our final uncommon. Two green green for a creature crocodile on common. It's a 4-4. As long as any creature on the battlefield, your side or your opponent's, has a minus one, minus one counter on it. It's got Vigilance and Death Touch, which is real beefy. 4-4 four, for four, four is already something we don't often get, you know, 2-2 two, too two often. But uh, a 4-4 four, four Vigilance Death Touch for four is pretty darn solid. And this is definitely a first pickable card. I think I even slightly underrated it in my set review. I wasn't too low on it at all, but I, I think I still underrated it. Um, yeah, I think it can hang out in frame as well. Our final card can get right out of frame because it's a Vanilla 4-3. For five. Uh, it's Jiru with eyes, uh, with eyes open. Three white white for a 4-3 legendary creature, human warrior at rare with vigilance. And uh, if you have a planeswalker, congrats, you're going to do well in this draft, probably. But if you do, you get to go search it up with uh, Jeru. And uh, if any damage would be dealt to a planeswalker, you get to prevent one of it. It's a vanilla 4-3 vigilance for five. It is uh, almost unplayable. If you desperately need a creature, sure, but this should go around the table at least once. It's just real bad. So, we're looking at these cards. I think Sinuous Striker comes out right away. I think we're looking at Tenacious Hunter, Ambuscade, or Farm to Market. And I think, I think it's down to the two green cards. And this is uh, one that I'm not sure about, and I'm going to have to play the format more, I think. I think to start, I take the Tenacious Hunter. It's an uncommon. I'm not going to see it as often. It's, uh, you know, just straight up power. It's potentially going to kill a lot of things, whereas Ambuscade will kill one thing. As well, Ambuscade's a common. I, I might see another one uh, in the next couple of packs. So I think I'm going to go with Tenacious Hunter for now. Let me know what you'd have taken, though. I could see uh, definitely taking Ambuscade. I could also see taking the Striker or Farm to Market, for that matter. Let me know what you would have taken in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana League. That's L E E K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com/slash Mana League, Twitch.tv/slash Mana League, and Patreon.com/slash Mana League. 
you like the content, click that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.